Abraham had a nephew named Lot, who lived with his family in the city of Sodom in Jordan. One day, when Abraham was sitting outside his house, he saw three people approaching. He immediately guessed that they were not normal humans and went out to meet them. Two of the men were angels, and the third was God himself. After Abraham greeted them, God spoke to him. Abraham, the people of Sodom and the neighboring city of Gomorrah have become very evil. They are doing horrible things and do not respect me at all. I have decided that I will destroy these two cities. Abraham became very alarmed as he loved his nephew dearly and couldn't bear to think of him and his family being killed. Oh Lord, have mercy! I am sure there must be some good people living there also. You are fair and just, so how can you destroy the good people also for no fault of theirs? If there are even 50 good people there, won't they be punished unjustly? If there are 50 good people there, I will not destroy the cities. If fact, there are even 20 good people there, then too, I will not do anything. I don't know how to convince God not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I wouldn't be able to bear it if anything happened to my dear nephew and his family. God, I know I should not be speaking to you like this, because I am just a human being and you are God. Please don't be angry with me for saying this, but if 10 people are also good in the two cities, don't you think they should not be punished with the guilty? Hmm. We shall see. But do you know of any 10 good people there? God knew that Abraham was worried about his nephew Lot and his family. God also knew that Lot and his family were the only good people in both the cities. Everyone else was on an evil path. God had already decided that he would not let any harm come to Lot and his family. So the next day, he sent two angels disguised as men to meet Lot. Lot was at the city gates when he saw the two angels disguised as men. He went up to the strangers and greeted them warmly. Welcome, welcome. I am so happy to meet you. Please do come to my house. It will be my privilege to serve you. The two men accompanied Lot to his house. A meal was prepared for them, and along with his wife and daughters, Lot fed them with love and respect. The guests were preparing to rest after their meal when there was a big commotion outside Lot's house. When Lot looked out, a huge crowd had gathered there. What do you want? Why are you making so much noise? Who are the two men who have come to your house? They are my guests. Why are you interested in them? Bring them out and let us deal with them. No, no, please do not do this. They are my guests and will leave soon. Bring them out or we shall come in and take them. Please, I beg of you. If you want, you can even take my daughters. Lot knew that if he turned those men to the crowd, they would definitely treat them very badly. He turned and quickly locked his door so that the crowd would not be able to enter his house. However, he was very scared because he knew that the crowd could very easily break down the door. Lot, just come inside and relax. You have done all that you could do. Saying this, the angels pulled Lot inside, opened the door, and before anybody could understand what was happening, the angels had blinded all the men outside. Now you need not fear the mob, Lot, as they are all blind and will not even be able to see the door to break it. Go and gather all your family members and prepare to leave, as we have been sent by God to destroy both Sodom 
and Gomorrah. And hurry up. There is not much time left. Once again, we are telling you, if you have any other members of your family whom you wish to save, now is the time. Go quickly and warn them. Lot's daughters were married to some young men staying in the city. He rushed to their houses to tell them to leave, as the cities were going to be destroyed soon. However, his sons-in-laws refused to believe him and just made fun of him. <laughs> Listen to what our dear father-in-law has to say. Our city is going to be destroyed. <laughs> Lot went back home. He was very sad. He couldn't believe that God was actually going to destroy his home and town, as well as the neighboring town. However, he and his family were too scared to question the angels and started gathering a few things to take along with them before making their escape. As dawn broke the next morning, the angels again told Lot to hurry up and prepare to leave, but Lot was still hesitant. It broke his heart to leave behind his home and city, as well as his daughters. The angels then decided that they could not wait any longer and spoke sternly to Lot. Look, Lot, you are a good man, which is why I have been sent to take you away from here safely before God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. If you do not hurry now, even you will be destroyed. Also, we have to warn you all, when we are leaving, None of you should look back. As Lot looked around at his house, the angels quickly held his wife and daughters by their arms and led them towards the door. Lot, will you hurry up now? We don't have much time. Please try and understand. Finally, Lot also followed the angels and his family, looking back sadly at his home that he would leave forever. The angels quickly led them to the outskirts of the city. Now quick, run to the hills, there and save your lives. And once again, remember what we told you. Do not look back. Oh, please have mercy on me. I will not be able to climb up the hill. Please let us go to that city over there. It is only a small city. Please spare it. All right, Lot. We shall not destroy that city for your sake. But now hurry and escape. As soon as you reach that city safely, Sodom and Gomorrah will be destroyed. You are warned once again not to look back, no matter what happens. Lot, along with his wife and daughters, hurried away as fast as they could. As the sun started rising, there was a massive storm of burning hot sulfur that rained down on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The people of the two cities could not understand what was happening. They were very scared and ran here and there, not knowing what to do. They screamed in pain when the hot sulfur fell on them. Very soon, everyone in the two cities was dead. There were bodies lying scattered all around and houses were completely destroyed. Though Lot and his family were quite far away by then, his wife did what the angels had told them not to do. She turned around to catch a last glimpse of the city. As soon as she did that, she turned into a pillar of salt. Lot and his daughters couldn't believe what they were seeing. No, oh no, what has happened to my wife? She disobeyed God. You were all warned several times not to turn and look back, but she did not obey. So this is the fate she has met. Oh please, please, can she not be forgiven just once? No, Lot. Nothing can be done now. Please take your daughters and go. Feeling sad and miserable, Lot and his daughters continued ahead leaving behind the salt pillar that was once Lot's beloved wife.